All right, we're learning questions here for the Go programming language job interview. I'm not saying that correctly, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> we're learning, uh, you know, if you, if you are applying for an interview, if you're interviewing, well, I don't know what happened to my talker. If you're interviewing for a position as a Go developer, if you're applying for a job as a Go developer, these are questions that might be asked of you in a job interview. Likewise, if you're an employer, a company, an organization that's looking to hire a programmer in the Go programming language, uh, you could use these questions. You could find all these questions at the repo on GitHub. Uh, it's in my account, so GitHub goes to 11. The repo is Learn to Code Go version 3. This is the code base for my course on the Go programming language, which you could find at Udemy, Todd McLeod, Go, right there. Learn to Code the Go programming language. And in this repo, everything with a number from 0 forward is code related to the course, but everything with just zeros is just like my working area. And so here in the working area, we have interview questions, and you'll be able to find all those questions right here. Um, and I'll also put a link into the course outline for my entire course, which is 157 pages long. It has links to sample code, so you can look through that if you're wanting to learn the Go programming language or look something specific up. Uh, that link for this course outline to that this course right here will be in the description down below. Let's take a look at our question for this video. The question is, is what is the short declaration operator and when do you use it? I'm gonna categorize this question as either a beginner or an intermediate question. I think I'm gonna stick it in here under the beginner questions and uh, because it's just basic beginner syntax, this is like right out of the gate, you learn what the short declaration operator is. But the reason I equivocated, equivocated, <laughs> I waffled uh, over whether or not it should be beginner or intermediate is because the way you answer this question can, uh, can move you into the intermediate category. And so you could answer this question in a very uh, simple way. You could say the short declaration operator is the colon equal sign. It allows you to declare and assign a value uh, to the variable, so to initialize the variable all in one stroke. It provides brevity and you know clarity and it's concise and so it allows you to write idiomatic Go code. And the more you start to expand on that, the more you could kind of open the door to showing your knowledge about the Go programming language. And, uh, and then it can only be used with inside a function body, right? But the important thing here to move yourself from the beginner to the intermediate category is to make a, dis a differentiation, differentiate, differentiate, differentiate <laughs> between uh, you know, the short declaration operator and uh, you know, var. And so you wanna, you wanna speak to how var should be used, should be used to declare, you know, these are rules of thumb, which doesn't mean you have to adhere to them all the time, but as a rule of thumb, most of the time, generally speaking, you wanna use var to declare a zero value and then the short declaration operator for everything else. And then anytime you need some value to exist outside, of a function scope, uh, you could use var, but as much as possible, you wanna to try to limit your scope. Uh, and the primary rule of thumb, the pr primary heuristic is that var should be used to declare the zero value of, um, you know, of a variable and a value. So that's my answer for the short declaration operator and uh, you should use it as much as possible. <laughs> that should be your go-to, but it could only be used inside of a function block and then use var to declare your zero value. I did have one little addendum I wanted to add to the previous video where we talked about, um, what did we talk about? We talked about uh, idiomatic Go code. And so I have these notes here, right? On what does it mean to write idiomatic Go code? I put these notes in here for idiomatic Go code and what idiomatic Go code entails. So you could pause this video and you could read through those notes because those are the notes on idiomatic Go code. Um, and then the last thing I just want to say is there's a link to this entire playlist in the description of this video. So if you want to go through all the videos for these interview questions and uh, just hear how I think about this stuff and the questions I put together. And who knows, companies might be using these questions and these might be the very questions you're asked <laughs> in an interview. So by going through all these questions and making sure you have a good answer for them, uh, you know, you'll be prepared if some company has found these questions and decided to use them. Uh, in their interview process, you'll have gone through them. All right, so that's what I wanted to share. Um, and I guess that's it. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. <laughs>